So I've been involved in seeing myeloma patients and also doing research now for about 18 years. I started um, my interest when I was training as a clinical fellow and then I've continued it all the way through. So myeloma particularly interests me from two aspects. The first one would be the patients. It's really good as a doctor to get to know your patients and to go with them on their journey with myeloma. And then also from the science side of things, there's been so many changes in myeloma treatment and myeloma science over the last 10 years or so. It's really stimulating, I guess, to try and work out what's going on and why things are happening. So I'm based at the Royal Marsden Hospital in London and we have one of the bigger practices of myeloma in the UK. We actually have a lot of patients that travel from around the UK um, to see us and so we probably see about 75 myeloma patients a week and we do about 100 um, autologous transplants a year. So I think the way that myeloma has been diagnosed over the last few years is probably about the same in the fact that the majority of patients present with bony pains um, or infections. I think that one of the problems is um, the general awareness of myeloma and often myeloma patients will have had their symptoms for maybe six months before they actually make it to see one of the myeloma specialists. And so I think that um, one of the areas that um, people have been working on is really trying to aware, um, raise the awareness of myeloma and to try and um, make um, doctors more um, thinking about this kind of side of things when a patient presents with bony pain and not thinking that it's maybe a strain or something like that and it could be something more serious. So I think that we maybe do see a few more, but I think we still tend to catch the patients maybe a little late. So I think that the most significant um, findings in myeloma over the last 10 years or so probably fall into two categories. The first one would be the number of new drugs that are coming through and the fact that we know much more now about how a myeloma cell divides and why it goes wild and therefore we're much hopefully better at designing drugs and using drugs more wisely to get the myeloma under control. And then the second side of things, I think, is the genetics of myeloma. We're understanding a little bit more now, again, about what drives the myeloma cell to divide and to go to the wrong place. And so this means that we can um, be able to hopefully try and understand a little bit more about why some patients may do better than other patients when we give them specific treatments. So for me, one of the ways I think that we could make a big difference to myeloma would be to try and target our treatment very specifically to the myeloma cell. And so the research that my lab are doing is really to try and identify what's different about a myeloma cell compared to a normal blood cell. And the idea is that if we actually go for things which are very different about the myeloma cell and which are really what makes a myeloma cell a myeloma cell and we target that, then we'd be able to hopefully kill off the myeloma cell itself, but leave the rest of the blood cells and the rest of the cells in the body without having any effects from our treatment. And so my lab is really going after the protein that the myeloma cell makes and trying to target the fact that the paraprotein or the M protein, which is the protein the myeloma cell makes and which causes all the damage, if we can turn that off, then we might be able to kill the myeloma cell. So much of my research is based around that.
So I was really fortunate. I trained in my research um, in the US under Ken Anderson's leadership at the Dana-Farber. And when I was there, the research I was doing was very much into thalidomide and lenalidomide, and now the newer image, pomalidomide, as well as some of the work into bortezomib. So it was, I guess, in the 2000s, and it was the exciting time in myeloma when all of those new drugs came along. And it's really good to see that those drugs are being used routinely now in clinical practice. And most patients will end up having one of those drugs, probably with some steroids and maybe with some conventional chemotherapy. At the time, we had some ideas about why they were working, but we've, over the years, have learned much more about how and why they work. And this has meant that we're able to actually give the drugs in a better way and that not only means that they're more effective now, but the patients also get much less side effects from taking them. So can we find a cure for myeloma? I think that's always a really interesting question. I think unless we have a sudden eureka moment, we won't actually be looking for a cure. It may be that we're trying to make it into more of a chronic disease. So a little bit like how we manage blood pressure or how we manage diabetes. And so from a patient's perspective, I think that may mean that the patient needs to be on treatment for certain periods and can then maybe come off treatment. But I think what we should be able to manage is that we can control the disease and hopefully have the patients being normal and active and that the disease taking very much a back seat in their kind of everyday life. I think there's probably two things. I think from a clinical perspective, we still struggle with some of the actual, I was gonna say bad sides of myeloma. So the bone damage and the bony pains and infections. And then we also struggle a little bit with the side effects from the treatment, because although the treatment's very good, it um, undoubtedly has some side effects. And those side effects can be, I was going to say, a little strange and maybe um, quite troublesome. So thinking about some of the, the pins and needles and pains that you can maybe get with some of the drugs we use. And then I think the other side that um, is really very troubling is often the psychological side. So the uncertainty and the fact that you need to, that patients are living with something which I guess they can't see and is it active, is it quiet? And I think that side of things as well is, can be really troublesome. Okay, so from my own kind of, my own practice, I think that um, patients who, I guess, take an active role in their myeloma, this can be a really positive um, uh, benefit for both the patient and the doctor. Because I think that that means that um, they're looking after themselves. So the usual things that we're always told and none of us ever do. So a healthy diet, gentle exercise, making sure the muscles are nice and strong around the bones. Um, and trying to avoid infections, not wrapping oneself in cotton wool, but trying to just stick away if people are obviously unwell. But I think also having a good relationship and a good dynamic with your consultant, because that means that those things that may be troubling you, um, or indeed that the consultant's a little bit worried about, you can really get to the bottom of those things during their kind of um, relationship and their consultations. And I think that whole, that whole idea makes a really good um, way of dealing with myeloma, ensuring that the patient gets the best care. I think at the moment, if you go into um, the clinical trial monitor on the, on the internet, there's actually hundreds of myeloma studies going on at the moment, which is exciting for patients um, and for doctors. Um, it does sometimes feel a little bit like, um, I'm going to say, a horse race as to guessing which is going to be the drug that makes it to the finishing line. Um, but I think there's a couple that are coming through which are really very interesting, and those are the um, antibody studies. 
So these are hopefully going to be drugs which specifically target the myeloma cell, so very much like a lock and key. And there's been um, a number of different um, antibodies that have been developed. And certainly in those very early studies, I think everybody's been surprised that patients have um, responded to the treatment and also not had very many side effects. So I think from a clinical perspective, those studies are really exciting. Also from a science perspective, a lot of people now are not only doing the clinical study, but are also following patients very closely with some of the newer techniques. So those are maybe some of the genetic techniques that we can do on the bone marrow cells, but also some of the um, imaging techniques such as CTs and um, MRI scans. So we can really get a good handle on exactly what happens to a myeloma patient when they have treatment. And I think that will be good because it will help us learn much more what's going on and therefore be able to direct our treatments better in the future.